Lesson 4, Applying Quantum Mechanics. The objective of Lesson 4 is to introduce the Duop board and understand how it can be used to describe the arrangement of electrons in an atom. In the last lesson, we discussed a code known as quantum mechanics that would enable us to describe how electrons are arranged about the nucleus of a particular atom. We stated that knowing this arrangement would enable us to understand the nature of those atoms. In other words, how stable they were or how reactive they were with other atoms. In order to learn the application of the code to our model of the atom, we'll, we will use a study aid known as the Duop board. I'd like for you to now find your manipulative booklet that you purchased along with your student textbook. We'll be removing the cover from the booklet. This cover will become our teaching aid known as the Duop board. Open your booklet cover as far as it will go and just go ahead and crease it back. Using a sharp pair of scissors, cut along the spine of the book to remove both the front and the back covers. Note along the bottom edge there are rows of colored discs. Go ahead and cut that strip of colored discs away from the remainder of the cover and then cut out each of the colored discs. Set those aside for now. With the remaining portions of the cover, go ahead and tape the top half to the bottom half. To know which is the top half and the bottom half, look along the, the left hand edge and you'll see a set of numbers from 1 up to 5. Note that the, set, the, the portion that has the 1 on it will become the bottom half of your board and the section with the 5 on it becomes the top half of your board. If you look at the diagram here you can see what the finished board should look like. Pause your DVD player now and complete this procedure. When you're ready to continue, click play or resume. Across the bottom of your Duop board, you will see the word nucleus written, which indicates that everything on the board above the term nucleus will be considered outside the nucleus or in the electron cloud. The Duop board represents a section of the electron cloud. Look at the first circle just above the nucleus. To the left of the circle you'll see the notation 1s. The 1s indicates that the circle, that this circle will hold the electrons in the first orbit or energy shell from the nucleus which happens to be spherical in shape, hence the, the notation 1s. The 1 is the principal quantum number and the s tells us the shape of that orbit. Each circle above the 1s circle is another orbit of a particular shape. The sequence that the circles are placed on the board is significant, but we'll discuss more about that later. At this point, realizing that each circle represents an orbit of a particular shape is important. So as you look up the left-hand side of your board, you'll see a 1s, then above that a 2s. The 2 indicates that we're on the second level. The shape is spherical. You'll see p's indicating the pear-shaped orbit, and if you look up a little farther, you should see some d's, which indicate the dumbbell-shaped orbits. Now the colored disks that you cut out, and there and having two piles, will represent the electrons. Those electrons will be placed into the circles to represent the electrons in the atom. Let's begin by looking at an example. Example one, Let's start with an atom of helium. The first thing that you'll need to do is find out how many electrons will be found in an atom of helium. You'll probably recall that the symbol for helium is HE and can be found in the upper right hand corner of your periodic table. There you will see that the atomic number for helium is 2. This means that an atom of helium will have 2 electrons, 2 protons, and as we said earlier, generally 2 neutrons. The number of electrons, which is 2 for helium, is important to us right now. Now go to your piles of the colored disks that we call duops, which represent electrons. Get one of each color. The first rule of how electrons fill the circles or the orbits is that electrons begin filling the orbits nearest the nucleus and proceed outward. 
Imagine that you're holding your doo-wop board in a sink of water. As you fill the imaginary sink with water, the bottom cup or orbit will fill first. That cup is the 1s orbit. As the water rises, then the 2s orbit will fill, and then the 2p, and so on. This is exactly how you will place your electrons into the cups. From the bottom up, or to be more precise, from the inside of the atom moving outward. Let's get back to our example of helium now. You found from the periodic table of elements that each atom of helium has two electrons traveling in its electron cloud. Following this fill rule that we just discussed above, like the water filling uh, in the sink, you should place two doo-wops you're holding in the first or that bottom circle. Recall that within each shape of orbit you will find two electrons. Hence we place both of, the, both of the electrons that an atom of helium has in the first orbit. You might note that once you've placed two electrons in an orbit, that orbit is considered filled. You can't place more than two electrons in each circle or in each orbit. You may be wondering why you're, you are using two colors of the doo-wops. The answer is that the two colors of doo-wops represent the two spot possible spins of those electrons, the clockwise and the counterclockwise spin. I'm hoping that you remember that this is the spin quantum number that we discussed in the last lesson. Now, by looking at your doo-wop board, you can describe helium as having two electrons in its electron cloud. They're both found traveling in a spherical-shaped path on the first energy level. This process is called reading your doo-wop board. At this point in our discussion, we haven't yet explored what this information means regarding the reactivity or stability of helium. You'll find a considerable amount of material in the next lessons, which will help you make inferences regarding the reactivity or stability of each element. Right now, let's look at another example. Example 2. Describe the arrangement of electrons found in an atom of carbon. Like we did earlier, find carbon on your periodic table of elements. The symbol for carbon is C. If you look over on the right hand side of the table, you'll see the element carbon on the first row of elements going across the top of the table. The atomic number for carbon is 6, meaning that an atom of carbon has 6 electrons, 6 protons, and is, like we've been saying all along, generally 6 neutrons. We're concerned with the number of electrons, which is six. So we're going to take six of the, our electrons, three of each color. Using the first fill rule, place two electrons in the 1s cup, one of each color. Then place two more in the next cup up, which is the 2s cup. Now you'll come to a series of three cups at the 2p level. Remember in Lesson 3 when we discussed the magnetic quantum number, which was the quantum number that tells us the orientation of space in, in which the orbits lie? We stated that the pear-shaped or the p-orbits were the only shaped orbits for which knowing an orientation of space would be helpful when describing the arrangement of electrons in the electron cloud. Now look back at your doo-wop board at the 2p level. You'll see three circles each with an X, Y, or Z notation. These notations represent each of the three possible orientations of space in which you might find electrons traveling in pear-shaped orbits. Look back at lesson three if you need a review uh, over these concepts regarding the magnetic quantum number. Let's look back at our example now of carbon. We've used four electrons so far. We put two in the 1s cup and then we put two in the 2s circle or cup and we have two left over in your hand. The second fill rule states that one electron is placed in each orientation position x, y, and z and if necessary a second is placed in each position. In other words you place one of your electrons in the 2p x circle, a second electron in the 2p y circle and if it necessary another one in the 2pz circle. Then if necessary, or if you have an, an element that has more electrons, you'll go back and place a second electron in the 2px, a second in the y, and then a second in the z orientation. 
In our case of carbon, we have two remaining doo-wops to place on the board. We'll put one in the 2px circle and then the second one in the 2py circle. Note that it doesn't really matter which color you place in the circle first as long as you have one color to represent the clockwise and counterclockwise spins of the electrons in each circle. If you have a, an element that has an odd number of electrons, you'll end up possibly with one cup with only one electron and the color again doesn't really matter. To complete this example of carbon, let's read our board. Let's make a statement regarding the arrangement of electrons found in an atom of carbon. We can say that by looking at our board that each atom of carbon contains six electrons. Two are found in the spherical shaped orbit on the first energy level. Two are found in spherical shaped paths on the second energy level. And then two are found in pear shaped orbits also on the second energy level, one traveling in the X orientation and one traveling in the Y orientation in space. Let's look at a third example. Describe the arrangement of electrons found in an atom of magnesium. First we'll need to find magnesium on our periodic table. Note that its symbol is Mg and not Mn. Mg is the symbol for magnesium, Mn is the symbol for manganese. So look there on the left side of your chart and you'll find uh, magnesium symbol Mg. Note that the atomic number for magnesium is, is 12. Therefore we're, we will need six uh, electrons, uh, a total of 12 electrons, six of each color. As you begin to fill your board you note that you should have two electrons in the 1s orbit, two electrons in the 2s orbit, and then by filling, following the second fill rule, we're going to place one electron in the 2p or 2px, one in the 2py, one in the 2pz. Now we're going to return back and put a second electron in the 2px, a second in the 2py, and then a second in the 2pz orbit. Right now you should have two electrons still left in your hand. If you look back at your board, the next circle to be filled going outward from the nucleus is the 3s orbit. This means we'll have come clear to the third layer of electrons in this atom. Those two electrons will be placed in the 3s or the spherical shape path. Let's read our board now. Based upon what's in our board, we can say that magnesium has a total of 12 electrons in its electron cloud. Two electrons can be found traveling on the first layer in a spherical shaped path. On the second level, we'll have two electrons traveling in a spherical shaped path, as well as a total of six electrons traveling in the 2p or pear shaped path. Two of those electrons will be traveling in the X orientation, two in the Y orientation, and two in the Z orientation. On the third level, we have two electrons traveling in a spherical shaped path. To review lesson four, we learned that the DUOP board helps us visualize the arrangement of electrons in atoms. We learned that electrons fill from the nucleus outward. And once filled, we can read the board to describe the electrons in various elements.